The San Diego County Gun Owners PAC calls itself the voice for local gun owners. Here with more on the group's mission is my guest, Executive Director Michael Schwartz. And Michael, this is the first pro-gun rights organization in San Diego. Why form this group now? I feel like we've had a we have a lot of repre representation in Washington D.C. at the federal level. We have a lot of representation at the uh, state level in Sacramento, but there's a lot of need at the local level here in San Diego for representation. We have 18 city councils, we have a county board of supervisors, and we have a, a sheriff, and, and it's just not quite getting the uh, attention that, that it needs in San Diego. Uh, what does the, the group want to accomplish? Well, the four things we do are Second Amendment advocacy on a local level, meaning city councils, uh, county board of supervisor, sheriff, that sort of thing. Second thing we do is organize gun owners. So there's a community of gun owners in San Diego, and a lot of them feel like they're kind of out on, a, on an island by themselves. So we want to give them opportunities to get involved in the process. Um, and the process of? Of advancing, protecting, and, and uh, restoring Second Amendment rights. Uh, third thing we do is fundraise to support all our efforts. And the fourth thing we do is work with the gun shops uh, to do the previous three things. And, and speaking of working with local gun shops, what is the gun debate like here in San Diego? How is that being felt? Well, I, I, th I think the number one issue uh, that uh, people ask me about in San Diego is the ability to obtain a concealed weapon permit. And that is completely in the hands of Sheriff Gore. And he's been extremely restrictive. Um, he's actually been sued in court. Um, he's uh, most recently lost at the uh, Ninth uh, Circuit uh, Court of Appeals, and he still won't uh, issue concealed weapon permits. There was also the issue in, in Carlsbad, right? The gun store, and then also n also this year, I think, uh, trying to talk about getting the uh, shooting range going. Yeah, Carlsbad has one uh, gun store, Gunther Guns, and they had to fight tooth and nail just to open. Uh, they wanted to turn the rest of their warehouse into an indoor recreational uh, educational shooting range and uh, the city did not want a shooting range. Um, we, uh, after a, a lot of effort by a lot of different volunteers, um, the city council recently voted to add indoor shooting ranges to their, uh, their zone, their zoning code. Well, you wrote an op-ed piece in the San Diego Union Tribune uh, following the shootings on the college campuses uh, last year, I mean last October, or this past October, but you said no gun law will stop mass shootings. Why do you think tougher gun laws won't stop mass shootings? Well, what I specifically talked about was uh, the proposals that were happening right after the horrible uh, tragedy in Oregon. And they didn't, uh, people that were writing these solutions didn't have the facts. They just immediately fell back on the uh, same old gun laws that have been proposed and uh, have proved to be unpopular and ineffective. So what I was saying was that the proposals, the specific proposals that were being uh, uh, floated out there were not going to be effective. There are really two groups of people that are spiking the, the numbers when it comes to uh, crime using a gun, and that's the mentally unstable and repeat offenders. And those are the things we need to focus on. Well, uh, would you support then universal background checks on uh, everyone, including uh, people who have mental health issues? Well, what I support is uh, the ability for people to have the choice to protect themselves uh, with the, the tool um, that, they, that they choose. We're not trying to force our opinion on anybody. We, we're trying to stop others from forcing their opinion on us. But universal background checks for mental, the people who are dealing with mental illness? I think that we need to have a number of proposals for people that are uh, mentally ill. I, you know, say, saying, uh, it's, uh, saying that I support universal background checks or don't universal back, support for universal background checks leaves out a ton of detail um, that uh, we, we I, you can't just sum up in one sentence. Well, so far this year in the U.S., there's been 319 mass shootings, meaning um, mass shooting being defined as four people uh, or more were hit by gunfire, according to the website Mass Shooting Tracker. Um, what should be done to prevent mass shootings here in the U.S.? Well, again, the, the two groups that are committing these crimes are repeat offenders and the mentally unstable. So we need to address... Um, the the, the, uh, the uh, mentally unstable. Um, most of these shooters have been proven to be mentally unstable. There are all kinds of warning signs. Um, and what I would like to do is make sure that people have the tools to be able to protect themselves um, so that uh, they, uh, the stories about mass shootings turn into stories about people being able to stop or, or prevent a crime. We're going to have to end on this briefly. Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom introduced uh, a proposed ballot initiative that would, among other things, ban high-capacity magazines and require background checks on ammunition purchases. How will your PAC uh, work against this measure if it makes it to the ballot? 
uh, through education. All five of the uh, parts of, of his measure have been struck down by uh, Sacramento. They've been proven to be ineffective, bulky, expensive. Um, they don't make any sense. They're not really effective. And that's not me talking. That's the representatives in Sacramento who have already voted this down. So it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be hard. We're going to need, need a lot of people, but we're going to need to educate the public and make sure that uh, they understand that their representatives already saw that these uh, proposals won't work. Michael Schwartz, thank you so much. Thank you.